Hey, hey, happy Tuesday, happy book review day. Uh, today's book is Crossings, How Road Ecology is Shaping the Future of Our Planet, Ben Goldfarb. And this is nonfiction, as hopefully the title suggests. <laughs> and um, road ecology is one of those things that I, I guess I assumed existed, but I didn't have a word or vocabulary for it. Um, and so, um, Road ecologists, you know, study the way roads impact wildlife and just the environment in general. And so the, the book is mostly focused on animals crossing roads and roadkill and that kind of thing, um, and how different countries have addressed the problem. Um, there's lots of really interesting statistics and information throughout the book. It's not just focused on the U.S., although probably 60% of it is. Um, Goldfarb does go to South America and look at some of their, um, some of their solutions and struggles that they're having. Um, there's also a chapter about New Zealand, England, um, China gets some mention as well. Um, so, you know, it is broader than just the U S but he's clearly U S based. And so most of it is about the U S, um, some of the things that were super interesting were just thinking about how, so the biggest part of issues with animal crossings occurred really with the building of the interstates and uh, Goldfarb looks at, you know, kind of the history of um, how once cars exceeded 35 miles an hour, how more animals died. Um, in part because population went up, the cars were going faster, animals weren't attuned to predators moving that quickly, and so the reactions were slower. You know, it's a complicated problem, but the biggest thing was building the interstate system and highways in general. Um, because when we did, we just kind of plowed through the country in the way that was most convenient to us, not taking into account migration, um, not thinking about a lot of things like natural fauna along the way. And so, you know, when they paved highways, um, you know, they dug up all this earth and then rather than planting natural um, plants along the way, they just planted grasses. And that meant that insects like monarch butterfly, you know, didn't have milkweed that they had counted on on these different pathways. It meant that birds didn't have places to roost or nest or feed. Um, and so in addition to literally destroying their habitat, uh, they also took away food and safety things as well. So it's a really interesting, complicated problem. Um, and so some of the states, and it sounded like Iowa was one of the first ones, started removing the grasses and putting natural um, prairie plants in there, wildflowers and those kind of things, planting milkweed intentionally. Um, I know Minnesota is it's definitely one that has embraced that also and encouraging farmers to leave a portion of the, the road unplowed, even alongside their uh, fields. Part of that's also for um, winter and that kind of thing as well. So again, really complicated issues. Um, some of the interesting parts here are like in New Zealand apparently has the most roadkill, um, most deadliest for animals um, roads, which is kind of interesting. And um, in South America, he specifically talked about some of the struggles with trying to um, build up cities and infrastructure so people can travel, and then also trying to embrace the, you know, um, jungles <laughs> and um, rainforests and those kind of things. And one of the unique struggles there was so much of the life is in the canopy. And so, you know, just not even destroying the land to build the road, but then you're also destroying the, you know, the wildlife's refuge above. And so some of the roads that Goldfarb, Goldfarb saw were almost like tunnels through um, the wildlife and the environment, which is really interesting. So they're elevated so animals can get under it. Um, but then there's also, they've also left or built artificial uh, canopies to help the trees grow up and around the roads. Um, you know, and so I've been seeing like some of the green crossings, you know, some of the things where they've intentionally redone culverts so that animals can cross under roads. 
um, instead of blocking them off. You know, he does talk about waterways as well um, and how salmon and other fish are affected by these gates and grates that people put up. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a really interesting book to think about different aspects of how we have impacted uh, our planet and, and then you know, what we can do to try to fix some of these things. You know, one last thing I guess I'll say is there's also a really interesting in there, thing in there about um, autonomous vehicles and how, you know, you, or in my case, me, would definitely stop for a turtle or snake, um, but an autonomous vehicle may not make that choice and, um, you know, may not even pick it up on its radar. And then on the flip side, um, because of the way autonomous vehicles work, um, there's the potential to record a lot of information about animals that are crossing and roadkill on the roads and report that back in a way that is, uh, you know, would be great from an automatic kind of standpoint instead of the very slow collection process um, where every state kind of has their own system and database and way of recording it and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, if you're into environmentalism, if you're just into thinking about, you know, the impact that humans have um, on the world and, you know, how we can how we can help um, or you just want to know more about how roadkill are collected and counted, uh, I would definitely recommend Crossings by Ben Goldfarb. Super interesting book.